To invest is to use your money, your time, or effort, notice, to own, possess, or make something right or better. When you invest in something, you're going to use your money, your time, or your effort to acquire something or to make something better. As young people, especially young black people, economically, we know how to consume or spend money. But I want to encourage you not only to be a consumer, but learn about investing. Yeah. Investing in something or someone, notice, can improve the quality of your life and increase the value of something or a person's life. I spend time and money with my wife. I spend money on buying her clothes, taking her places, talking with her on how I can be better. I'm investing in our relationship. I want it to be the best it can it can be. When we come to God's house on Sunday, you need to understand that I pray for you. I study and seek God and his word so I can give you what he would have. And the bottom line is, that's your pastor investing in you. How many are with me? I remember when I was coming up and my mother used to have family time. She would want to make sure that we did things as a, as a family. Even to the point to where we would go on vacation. And me being the teenager that I was, I did not like family time. I wanted to spend time with my friends. But as I got older, I understood that mama was just trying to invest in the family, trying to make sure that we valued one another. And so they're just monetary as well as intangible things, young folk, you, you need to invest in. Every month, you, you need to take you $20 to $50 and invest in getting your hair done. Invest in, in you. Don't, don't just wake up, even though it's popular to just get up and go. No, say, I'm going to look like a child of God. I'm going to dress myself and look like I am royalty. Invest in some soap. Yeah, invest in some something quality to improve your, your life. Now, you can make a bad investment, and so you have to be careful. How many are with me? Solomon reveals in this small, short verse what I call a great investment tip or strategy. The verse starts out by saying, buy these things and do not sell. Some things, young folks, listen to me real good. You need to know and see the value in it and hold on to it. Some things you need to keep to yourself or in your family. 
There are some parents that spend a lot of money and a lot of years acquiring things of value only for when them to die, they leave it to their children and their children lose it or quickly sell it to somebody else. There are some things you need to buy and hold on to it. Have the mindset that, look, I'm making a good investment. I'm going to take care of it, and it's going to increase in value, and maybe I'll pass it down to my children. Recently, I was talking to a father, and he's up in age, and he has two sons. And both of his sons are, are well off in their 30s. And he was explaining to me that he recently acquired some land. He bought some land from a neighbor. And he was telling me, he said, he said, Pastor, I, I want to leave my son something when I leave this earth. And so I was just listening to him. And he was telling me about the land. He said, it's not much, but it's mine. And when I die, I can pass it down. But then he said something. He said, now I got two sons, but one of them, I can't put it in his name. Because if it's in his name and I die, he going to mess it up. He going to mess up the investment. So he told, he told me, he said, I had to put the land in my other son's name and tell him I've made this investment. Make sure you take care of it and look out for your brother. Again, young people, there are just certain things that whether you acquire it or your parents acquire it, you should have the mindset not to mess it up. Somebody has invested time, money, and effort for you to enjoy certain things. Why Pastor Baker is such a stickler about keeping the MSW clean? Because God built it for the young folk, but while I'm here, made me responsible. And so I want to make sure we take care of what God has put in our charge. Whatever investment, you take care of. And so he gives them a strategy. And I want y'all to remember this. It's some things you need to buy and just hold on, hold on to it. It's certain jewelry that I buy that I intend to do certain things with it upon my death. I never sell it. It's certain things I want to do with it. How many are understanding? And so I want you to have that mindset that an investment is a biblical teaching that we need to under, understand. And so again, in our verse, he gives them four different products. He says, buy and do not sell. Truth, wisdom, understanding, and instruction. Now listen, young folk, these particular assets in the verse are intangible. You can't see them, you can't touch them, you can't wear them, but they are valuable. So much so that one of the wisest men in history said, once you get these intangible assets, don't sell them. You need to make sure you invest in truth, Wisdom, understanding, and for today, we're going to deal with in instructions. Look at somebody say, invest in instruction. Now, right off the reel, many of us, our definition of instruction may just simply mean or be direction. And you wouldn't be wrong. Instruction K 
can be defined in one sense as direction. But let's expound and deal with what the Spirit of the Lord gave me in context to the verse. Instruction number one, are y'all still with me? Knowledge that sets in order. Knowledge that you get, especially when it's attached to God, is going to set things in, in order. God allows us to make our own choice, but oftentimes we mess up ourselves and get our lives all out of order. But God said, I'm going to give you some instruction or some knowledge on how to get your life in order. I didn't want you to get hooked on weed. I didn't want you to get hooked on porn. I didn't want you to be no hoe. That was your choice. But I'm going to give you something that's going to get your life in order. Look how y'all looking at me. I know I'm Bible. He'll give us knowledge to set things in order. Biblically, the apostle Paul left a pastor named Titus in a city named Crete to set things in order and it was some young folk in Crete he, he gave him specific instruction they out of whack they've been listening to the wrong folk but 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 Titus I'm sending you there to set things or in order and sometimes young folk you can be guilty of listening to the wrong folk you can be list, guilty of listening to the wrong entertainers, the wrong teammates, the wrong family members, but don't you love God how he'll set things in order? Yeah, he'll send you some knowledge to help you get right. You ought to give God a hand clap of praise for helping us get right. We used to be can't get right, but because of the word, we can get right. He can help a marriage get right. He can help a young man get right. He can help a young woman that like other women, he can help her get right. It don't matter what it is, his arm is not too short that it cannot say he can help us all get, get right. He'll give us instruction. Number two, instruction is knowledge that corrects now you make your own choices but those whom the Lord loves he corrects or chastens and so what he'll do is he'll use the pastor or somebody connected to him to correct you and what do you call that in instruction instruction and how many know correction is not always pleasant? Correction will expose you. Correction may embarrass you. But remember who the Lord loves, he gonna correct. Give me some instruction, Lord. If I ain't thinking right, correct me. If I ain't talking right, correct me. If I ain't doing right, correct me. I wanna be right because I wanna make it in. I don't want to be living like I'm right, die, and then bust hell wide open. I need somebody bold enough to give me some instruction to correct my lifestyle. Whether you are old or young, remember, knowledge that corrects is in instruction. And finally, y'all still with me? Instruction is knowledge that builds. God's instruction should make you better. God's instruction should, should edify you. It should make you a stronger young woman or a stronger young man. Even if that means you having to stop doing stuff that you like doing, it's going to make you better. Now, he's going to put the instructions on the table, but keep in mind, the instructions should build you up. Woo, look at somebody say, God's instructions will build you up. 
So keep these definitions in mind. Knowledge or instruction is knowledge that sets things what? In order. Is knowledge that does what? Corrects and is knowledge that, that builds. So let's deal with it some more. I got a real good audience this morning. Let's go to Psalm 32 and let's look at some truth about instruction. We understand about investing and we see God wants us to invest in instruction. And now we know what instruction is. Let's go further in the scripture. Psalm 32 and 8. The psalmist says, I will instruct you and teach you, look at this, in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Bottom line. God will instruct us in the way, this is the key, we should go. Now, he going to give us the knowledge. He going to correct us. And it's going to be our choice. Now, I'm going to give you instructions on how to praise me. I'm going to give you instructions that you should clap your hands. You should shout with a joyful noise. You should do some leaping, some turning like David. You should enter in with some thanksgiving, with some praise. I'm going to give you the instruction. And this is what you should do. But it's your choice. It's your choice. God is not going to make us do anything and see when God puts instruction on the table those who choose to do it it says that you fear God I'm not going to go there but notice Proverbs 15 if you take in notes and it talks about how the in the fear of the Lord is the beginning of instruction in wisdom so if God instructs me and I do it, I fear him. I respect him. I reverence him. I could actually go far to say I love him because those who love him will keep his commandments. You can do what you want to do. It's your choice. But you always got to keep in mind God is going to instruct us on the best way. Even if we don't like it, it's the best way. Matter of fact, the Bible say his way is perfect. It's going to be the best way. Now, God, young people, is not the only one that's going to be instructing you in life. You're going to have other sources that will try to instruct you. But considering this verse, remember, that ain't the way we should go. You're going to hear God put some stuff on the table that's tight, that's not popular with the world. But you got to remember, this is the way that we should go. And when you hear somebody rapping, teaching, preaching, or trying to give you advice to the contrary, you need to say, that ain't the way that I should go. I got to give you a contemporary example. I mean, this is just so in line with this teaching on this morning. Because we hear a message from the Lord for about 45 to 55 minutes, once a week, maybe twice a week. But when you leave here, you're going to hear a lot of instructions. You're going to hear a lot of instructions on how you should carry yourself sexually. You're going to hear instructions on what you need to be drinking, how you need to be dressing, what's popular, what's cute. You're going to hear a lot of instructions, and y'all can't fool me. I know what I'm talking about. One in particular is this group called City Girls. Yeah. City Girls. JT in Young Miami. They got an album coming out this week called Raw 
I don't cuss. A, look at this, whores. Raw, A, hoes. When you consider the track list, they want the listeners to be hoes. My, my prayer is, is that we don't have no trendsetters that start having no hoe-like activity. Cute young women. Some may say fine. But you got to look past the surface. Look past the beat. Got a song called Twerk You Later. Twerk You Later. Got another song called I Need a Thug. Pinata. Now, now use your imagination. You beat a pin yacht. So we imagining what they talking about beating in the song. But then they got another song just flat out tell you. It's called P Talk. And we ain't talking about Pierre. It is P Talk. <laughs> but this is what gets me, young people. Again, we're talking about instructions. Look at the quote from this article from Vibe that the city girl said. I hope that they still see us as a representation of black women. Young black women, fun black women, ratchet black women, all black women. This is a, th these are the instructions. They want all black women to be some raw hoes. Say it like Pastor Baker said, they want all young women to be some raw say, hoes. That's it. And we don't need that type activity. Look at somebody say, we don't need no whole activity off up in here. And see, what I found out, you, you'll have some Christian young men and young women, they'll, they'll play with it. They'll play with it. It'll be on their playlist. They'll play it in their car. And you're just taking on that whole spirit. Look at somebody say, don't do that. No. Don't get them instructions in you. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, Speak, so you're going to start acting. You're going to start acting. Man, why he being a player? That's that whole activity. Why she, why she being so, so, you know, so? That's that whole activity. You got to watch whose instructions you are allowed to get in you. We expect this from sinners. When I wasn't saved, I had whole activity. But I'm saved now. I'm born again now. I'm up under the blood. I got the Holy Ghost now. Am I the only one? But God will instruct you. So either you're going to allow God to instruct you or another spirit to instruct you. Psalm 94. Psalm 94. In verse 12. Thought I would teach you so hard they fell out the chair, but. <laughs> Psalm 94 and 12. Blessed is the man whom help me choir. Come back to practice. Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O oh Lord, and teach out of your, your law or out of your word. The Lord's instruction, young people, calls us to be blessed. 
when we receive instruction from God or whoever is attached to God, it's going to cause us to be blessed. Now, can I flip it? If you receive instruction from someone that's not attached to God, that person is going to be cursed. Cursed. So it's either, do you want the blessing of the Lord or do you want a curse? It all hinges on whose instructions you choose to follow. It all hinges on when you get outside this church, whose instructions are you following? Is it causing you to be cursed or is it causing you to be, be blessed? And notice the verse, God's instructions are going to line up with his word. It's going to line up with his law or his word. So whatever you're tempted to do, desiring to do you should be able to line it up with the word and that will tell you whose instructions you're following and what it's going to lead to now this one right here going to get touched Psalm 50 verse 17 seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. It's obvious when people hate instructions. Notice the verse. You can see it. You can look at a young man's life and see, and come to the conclusion, he ain't listening to no good instructions. You can look at a young girl's life and you can be like, ooh, we. She is not taking instructions to heart. It's obvious. You can see it. You can listen to how some folk talk. And you can come to the conclusion they might hate instructions. Haters of instructions, it's obvious. Why, pastor? Because a hater of instruction, they reject the word. You can tell them Bible all day, but they're going to do what they want to do. That's somebody who does what? They hate instruction. You hear them say stuff, say, I can't wait till I get up out of here. Oh, yeah, you hate instruction. You'll invite them to church and they'll be like, well, how long y'all be there? You'll be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not a good sign. But then go out to eat, go to the movies, and, and spend seven, eight hours doing nothing. But then invite them to church. How long y'all gonna be there? Mm. It's obvious. When you get to a church that's giving godly instructions and they fall asleep, that's an obvious sign that somebody that hate instruction. And you got some, they don't go to sleep, but they will play on that phone. Yes, they will. They'll be on the feed going up and down. They'll sit somewhere where can't nobody see them. They hold their phone down like that. Bottom line, that's somebody who hate instructions you can tell it and it's just a matter of time for you read what you saw can you imagine how many people in jail right now saying I wish I would have just listened to so and so how many girls right now in a situation mama told me to lead E tight alone God's instruction will show us the way that we what? Should go. 
his instruction to cause us to be blessed. And haters of instructions are, are obvious. Now, I'm just going to tell the truth. I'm really trying to help somebody. I mean, right hand in the air. I'm, I'm trying to hate, help somebody. I'm really trying to help somebody. How many is getting it? In my clothes, I want to show us ways to invest in instruction. This is the summary of the message. This is how you invest or buy instruction and don't sell it. Now, of course, there are many ways, but I just want to give you a few, and then we're going to be done. Let's start in Proverbs 1. Proverbs chapter number 1. And notice, if you will, Scroll down to verse number eight. No, because I don't hear none of this. I know y'all got an app, right? So scroll to verse eight. Ways to invest in instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. Number one, way to invest in instruction is to hear it. Hear instruction. Now notice, first he says, hear the instruction of your father. Having to do with your pastor. Hear the instruction, hear the teaching. Hear the lessons that God gives your pastor. Just just take heed. Listen intelligently. Don't, Don't get defensive. Don't take it personal. Just listen intelligently and look at yourself. Treat the message just like a mirror. Look in your life and see where you could be better. Father has to do with your past. But then he talks about not forsaking the law of your mother. Law having to do with rules. A mother is simply the woman of a family who's the bond keeper. And to keep the family together, one thing a good mother will do is she gonna have some rules. She gonna have some rules. Don't reject the rule maker. Now, we can talk about this Contextually from a mother and a family, but remember, it's a proverb. So, everybody ain't your mother. But there are going to be people in your life that have set rules. When you go get a job, they're going to have rules. They're going to have rules about being on time. They're going to have rules about what to do if you run in late. They're going to have rules about this, that, and the other. How you should dress, how you should treat the customer. You got to respect the rule maker. They're going to give you some rules. And so you need to heed who's ever in authority in your life. When you leave here, you, you may bump into a state trooper. And he may tell you, keep your hands on the steering wheel. Go ahead and just say, I ain't doing jack. See what happened. (laughs) Put my hands where I want to. Pig, go ahead. Don't follow the rules and see. See what happened. See what happened. Gone down to Walmart and pick something up 
and just walk by the cashier and be like, all right, <laughs> see what happened. The rule is pay for whatever you want to purchase. Well, I won't do what I want to do. Check this out. The Bible says the law is for the law break. They got places to put you if you don't want to follow instructions. So you got to hear them. Listen, when you come to church, hear what pastor's saying, but when you leave, have the mindset, look, whoever in authority, as long as they're telling me to do what's right, I submit to the authority. How many are following me? Hear instructions. It's just so simple. Because some people have a hard time hearing instruction. They got selective hearing. They hear what they want to hear or they hear something. But it's not the instruction. Look. Fry me an egg and all I want on it is pepper. You got it? Mm-hmm. I'm going to fry your egg, and all I'm going to put on it is pepper. I'll be down to get it in 15 minutes. You get down there, and you see salt, onions, and green pepper on the egg. That's a clear sign that somebody didn't hear instruction. I need you to receive the offering for five minutes one two three four five five four three two one folk looking at you and it's like it's been eight minutes because they know the rule at the msw somebody didn't hear in instruction james said young people be swift or quick to hear. Let's take a quick poll. How many sometimes mess up when it just come to hearing instruction? Got it. Got to do better. Got to do better. Listening skills are very, very important in life. Some instructions, if you don't follow, them, can cost you money or get you killed. You got to you got to listen and not hear what you want to hear but hear what's being said. And some folk, well, let me not get ahead of myself. Tell somebody hear instruction. Proverbs 13. I told y'all I was going to get a little touchy. Proverbs 13 and 1. How to invest in instruction. Proverbs 13:1. A wise son Heeds his father's instruction. A wise son does what? Heeds. So now you hearing your father or what the pastor is teaching, and now you're taking heed to it. You take it and you put it into, into action. Don't just hear the word, but be a, a doer also. When you look in scripture, people's blessings were hindered or given to somebody else because they simply did not heed instructions. Look at Cain. Look at Adam. Both of them cursed because they did not heed instruction. But I love how Solomon breaks down and finishes the verse and he reveals why some folk don't follow or heed instruction. Matter of fact, to heed means to completely follow. Tell somebody completely follow. And I reference Caleb. The Bible says Caleb had a different spirit because he fully followed the Lord. He got instructions and he put it into action. But look at why some people don't heed instruction in the same verse. Come on, choir. A wise son heeds his father's what? Instruction. But a scoffer 
does not listen to rebuke or correction. Some people don't heed instructions because point blank, they are a scofer. New vocabulary word, tell somebody scofer. You know what a scofer is? A scofer is a person that loves to argue with authority. They are troublemaker. You can give them instruction, but you might as well put your seatbelt on because it's about to be an argument. It's about to be a fight. That's what a scofer is. And I must got some scofers in here because I can't get no help. I need you to pick me up at eight. I gotta be out of here. I gotta be at work at nine. Can you pick me up at eight? Yes, I can pick you up at eight. They show up, it's 845. Well, look, I, I had something to do. I didn't feel like that. Well, why you didn't call me? Because I didn't want to. I told you I beat. It's a fight now. Now we arguing. You got folk like that. You got, I've seen ministers, pastors, first ladies, young folk. I don't seen it. It's just some folk, you can give them instructions and they're going to argue with you. They're going to argue with you. Why? Why I got to do that? You mean I got to go through and explain to you? I'm the one leading. I need you to follow. I don't have time to argue. Can't I trust you just to do these simple instructions. I need you to check your sister homework. Feed her the meal I left in the refrigerator. It got vegetables. And then make sure she take a bath and put it in bed by nine. Them simple instructions. Mama come home. Why she didn't eat? She ate, but you know, she didn't want that. So I just, but I told you. Feed of what I left in there. Why are you arguing with me? It's 10 o'clock. Why is she up? Well, you, you, I told you have her in bed by nine. And won't even admit that they wrong. They just arguing back and forth. Well, she wouldn't do what I said. She wouldn't. No, no, no. no. Just follow instructions. Let's take another poll. How many scoffers in the building by a show of hands? Oh, so we don't have nobody that like to argue with instructions? You lying to me, somebody in here lying. I'm gonna take this poll one more time. One more time, I'm gonna give y'all an opportunity to tell the truth in God's house. Where the folk in here that like to argue with authority by a show of hands. No, don't be adding that sometime. Don't be adding, no, he working with me. Either you is or you ain't. Just had a whole month's teaching on being humble. Got to go back and listen. Because you got to get that out of you. You, you, can't, you can't fight with everybody that tells you what to do. Even if you don't like them, they may have authority over you. Even if you think they don't like black people, they got authority over you. That's a troublemaker. And if you get married one day, you're going to give a man some trouble. You're going to give a man some trouble because a real man going to be trying to rule the house and tell you and the kids what need to be done. But you want to argue. Roll your neck. 
You can drive kids to anger as a man. Always, I, ain't, I ain't arguing over everything. Once instructions come, we got to do it. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't like everything God tells me to do. Even though I know he loved me, I don't, I don't agree with everything or like everything he tells me to do directly or indirectly. But you got to mature to the point the way you just, well, you in charge. But this is what get me. We don't have, some people don't have a problem following instructions from a coach, a boss, a supervisor to tell you to do things you don't like to do. Guess what you do? You do it. You'll do it. Now I need you to work on Christmas. What? And guess what? When Christmas come, you be there. <laughs> you be there. Yes, you do. I got to go in. They said it's mandatory. But then God put something on the table. Or one of God's leaders put something on the table. All of a sudden then, see that ain't right. Or your older sibling, tell a younger sibling. You got a problem. Now you'll do what mama say, but if your older siblings say, and it's right, you want to fight. But bring that same energy when your mama say it. Let's see what happened. See what happened. The same energy you bring your older sibling, bring that to your parents. Now, if it ain't right one way, it ain't right the other. Hear instruction, heed instruction, Proverbs 4 and 13, and we done. Is this helping anybody? Yeah. When the leaders say, church out, but we need y'all to stay inside the MSW, hear instruction, heed instruction. When they going into the parking lot, you get right to that door. Oh, let me stay in here. Because the instructions will stay Proverbs 4 and 13. Take firm hold of, help me. Come on, choir. Take firm hold of, sing it. And do not let go. Keep her, for she is your. There are some instructions as we close you need to hold on to. And not just after you heard a message. There, there are some instructions, young people, you get, you need to hold on to them for your life. You was taught it and you hold on to it. It needs to become a part of you. You get taught the importance of being on time and starting on time. Guess what you do? You hold on to that. You get taught at a young age the importance of giving and tithing. Guess what you need to do? Hold on to that. You don't move out and then start robbing God. No, you have to hold, hold on. You get instructed on how to pray and how to live right. You don't get around your friends and let that go. You got to hold on to it. It has to become a part of you. And he tells us why. Because that's your life. That's where your salvation is at. There are some instructions, young people, will keep you safe. Some instructions will get you delivered. Some instructions will keep you from getting robbed. You take your parents' car out and they tell you don't go to this side of the city. That's going to keep you safe. Because they know how to get it over there. They know how to get it real good. And, and you ain't been exposed to that. And you call yourself not following them instructions. You mess around and get jacked. Remember when you saw this young girl here at the church and she would go to Atlanta? And say, look, you ain't in the country now. You can't leave stuff on the car seat when you go to the city. She ain't listened to them instructions. 
went to the city, left her bag on the car seat, got out and went a few steps. I mean, didn't even get down to the park and somebody already had busted the window, took her belongings and looking for her valuables. Some instructions, young folk, will keep you safe, give you boundaries, provide you with some caution or safety. He says, look, keep her. Instructions, young people, can birth great things out of you, but you got to hold on to them. When we teach you about the things of God, about money, and, and about life, you got to hold on to them. Because if you go off to school, you get a job, it's going to be things, remember, that try to take the word out of your, out of your heart. Even when you go to your local schools, it's things that want to take out the instructions that God put in you. But you got to hold on to them, knowing that this is going to birth greatness. It's going to produce something that can be a blessing to me and to somebody, somebody else. So it is crucial that I invest in instruction. How many understand what it means to invest in instruction? Tell somebody, hear instruction, heed instruction. Say, hold on and keep it. I'm done. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the lesson on this morning. Come on, let's put those hands together.